What's cracking, everybody? Welcome to Insane's House. Come on in. Come on in. DJ Insane. What's cracking? It's your man, DJ Insane, in Insane's House. You know what today is. It's a spiritual encouragement. And I got my man, Curtis, here. Who's gonna deliver us some good old word today? What's going on, my man Kurt? Oh man, everything's good, DJ Insane, man. Good to be on the mic with you. Live and well, man. Everything is good. Yeah, right. we're gonna be cooking with grease today, my brother. We're gonna be cooking with some hot grease. Hot <laughs> grease. Like water, hot water cornbread grease. That's I what like I was it. talking about. <laughs> yeah. So check this out. Um, we're going to get right into it. I don't want to waste any time. Um, when it's time to give that word, man, you got to be ready and get at it. So with that being said, I'm just going to leave the floor to my man, Curtis. You ready? All right, man. Yeah, Let's do man, it. I'm, I'm, I'm ready. Okay. All right. It's on Thank you. you the floor is yours. All right on. So uh, it, it's a pleasure to be here. I thank uh, my man, DJ Insane. Amen. And for uh, inviting me to his house. So from DJ Insane House to my house to your house, uh, we're here, amen, to uh, praise the Lord and to help you and also myself to get a better understanding, understanding and a deeper uh, appreciation of God and his word. And so we will start off with a word of prayer and then we will get into the scripture. Amen. And we're going to have a great time. Hallelujah. Good time. Hallelujah. And let us go. Amen. Let us go to the throne. Our Father, and our God, we do come thanking you and praising you yet for another day. Lord God, it's because of your grace and your mercy that you allow us, Lord, uh, to see yet another day. Lord God, to have rest upon last night and to wake up, Lord, and uh, the comfort of our homes, Lord God, and to be able to go to and fro from the kitchen to the refrigerator, Lord God, and to have the necessities that are necessary, Lord, for daily living. And uh, we say thank you, Lord, not that we don't so deserve it, Lord, but because you're so kind and so merciful. Lord God, uh, we know during this pandemic, so many are without, Lord God, and so many have their backs against the wall. But Lord God, if your people will turn from their wicked ways, Lord God, you will heal the land. So we thank you, Lord, this day. Now, Lord, we pray for understanding. We pray for peace. Lord God, we pray, Lord, uh, that you'll open up our eyes that we may hear you and open up open up our eyes that we may see you, open up our ears that we may hear you, Lord, because it's Jesus who make a difference in our lives. So we say thank you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Now today, uh, as you see, I got my pink shirt on. And for this is the month of love. And we know uh, Valentine is in the air. And though love is always appropriate. And as I uh, was uh, asked by my man, DJ Insane, to give a word of uh, inspiration, uh, uh, a word uh, that will help uh, someone, I automatically went to, for God so loved the world, which is John 3.16. But as I began to study, I thought about uh, the conversation that was going on in this particular chapter. And I wanted to really paint the picture that uh, John is painting uh, in this third chapter to see how Jesus so loved uh, humanity that he thought enough of the man that he's going to be having an encounter with uh, to give him some divine instruction uh, in the midst, amen, of his life. And so today we just want to just spend a little time in chapter three of John verses one through five. And it's a lot of meat on these bones, as a preacher uh, used to say some time ago. And hopefully as God see fit, we'll be able, amen, to pick off all this meat and apply it to our lives and that we may be a better person. And not only that, that someone today may hear this word and change from their wicked ways and believe on Jesus Christ for salvation. Now, as I read the scripture, again, starting at verse 1 in chapter 3, it said, There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. 
This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no man can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered and said to him, most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and of the Holy Spirit, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So as we begin to do our best to dissect this uh, verse or these verses, we want to do our best to paint a picture so we can actually see what's going on in Nicodemus' life, amen, and also in the life of Jesus at that particular time. As we travel back up to verse 1, we see it said there's a man of the Pharisee. And for most of us who have been in church for some time, we understand that the Pharisee people were really a self-righteous group. Uh, they believe uh, that they were uh, the best of the best, uh, the cream of the crop, if you will. If they were that bag of chips, all that in the bag of chips, amen, they had that mentality. Uh, but they were so, uh, what's the word I'm trying to use? They were so self-centered. They were so self-indulging that they could not see their sin. Uh, but this group, uh, they were more uh, dealing with the outside man versus the inside man. Uh, they, they were very clean. Uh, they spoke proper, but they also did their acts or their deeds to be seen by men and to be appreciated by men. And this man, Nicodemus, as we will see uh, in the preceding verses, was a man of power, a man of authority, and a man of influence. And so it says is his name, Nicodemus, which means victory, a victor or over someone. And so in that being said, you know, Nicodemus himself thought he was something. <laughs> yeah, his name uh, really spoke it all. It said he was a ruler of the Jews. And so he had a very prestigious uh, position in the Jewish community. And it's a council called the Sahedrin. Now, there was two Sahedrin councils. There was the lesser council, which was comprised of 30, I'm sorry, 23 individual, uh, I should say men, because uh, women weren't allowed to rule in that day. And there's also the greater council, which was 71 men, which I believe Nicodemus was a part of. And this particular uh, group uh, had a mixture of people. We look at doctors and lawyers and businessmen who actually were the Supreme Court of that day. And so again, uh, Nicodemus was a man of statue, a man of status, a man of means. Another uh, commentary said that Nicodemus was very rich also. And it said that Nicodemus had so much money that he can take care of Jerusalem himself for 10 years. So in our day, in our words, we say he was loaded. All right. And so, again, Nicodemus was a Pharisee, a ruler of the Jews. But this man came to Jesus by night, as we see in verse 2. And it could be said that... Uh, because of his uh, job during the day, that uh, he was uh, too busy to meet with Jesus. Or it could say him meeting Jesus at night could mean that he didn't want to see his homeboys and homegirls, see him hanging out with Jesus. And why? Because they might start some, some stuff, as we like to say. But nevertheless, Nicodemus uh, came to Jesus at night. And we're going to see the words of Nicodemus, for he said, this man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God. For no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. So we see that Nicodemus recognized the power that Jesus possessed. Nicodemus 
uh, recognized that it was uh, Jesus who was infilled or indwelt by the power of God because the miracles that he saw Jesus do, not only him, because he said, we know. And so when we look at the word we, we know there's a plurality or pr there's a plural, meaning more than one uh, individual that noticed what Jesus was doing. So Nicodemus said, Lord, we can identify that you are from God. Now understand this again about the Pharisees. The Pharisees believed in good and bad angels. They believe also in the resurrection. They also believed the coming of a Messiah. But they didn't believe at that time that Jesus was the Messiah or the one coming from God. And so they were uh, almost on the right track, if you will, if you look at the, uh, the way that they believe. But again, they thought they can uh, achieve eternal salvation without uh, inward change. And see, that's the problem with a lot of people today. They don't believe that they need to change on the inside. They believe that the outside tells it all. But as we will see and come to find out for ourselves that Jesus, amen, made sure Nicodemus knew the right way to salvation. And so again, Nicodemus said, Lord, we know, or rabbi or teacher, we know that you are from God. See, that's very important because Nicodemus recognized where Jesus' power has come from. It is up to you and I, if we uh, want to live this life the right way, to recognize who is our source. You know, a lot of times we realize or uh, we come to depend on our jobs as our source. Our jobs are not our source. It's a resource. The Bible said it is God who give us the power to go and get wealth. Doesn't mean we're going to be rich or millionaires. and doesn't mean that we're not going to be rich or millionaires. It means that God give us the power to get off our couch, get off our beds, get out the house and go work. Amen. And make a living. And so we see here again that Jesus is getting ready to turn Nicodemus world upside down. And. But Nicodemus, again, uh, I really don't want to leave him too soon. Nicodemus is inquiring of Jesus. Now, we're about to see Nicodemus in our own words. Uh, I will say in my own words then because you might not agree with me. But Nicodemus is about to get hit in the mouth. Amen. With a good hook by Jesus Christ. See, remember, and I want to paint this picture, like I said earlier, Nicodemus is coming and saying, Jesus, we know, excuse me, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher of God. We have seen your miracles. We have seen the hand of God in your life and on your life. We have seen you do what nobody else can do. We have seen you uh, uh, turn things around that only God can do. But let's look at verse three, see what Jesus says to Nicodemus. Jesus answered and said to him, most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Now, y'all, Nicodemus didn't ask nothing about salvation. Nicodemus didn't come say, how do I get to heaven? <laughs> Nicodemus just came to give, if you will, Jesus his props. Said, we know you are from God. See, but look at Jesus, how he just went directly to the core of Nicodemus' problem. What Jesus was saying to Nicodemus is that you need a Savior. And what I'm saying to you and I today, we need a Savior, and his name is Jesus. You and I must be born again. Now, when we look at this word and we look at this particular verse, it is talking about a spiritual renewal. It is talking about being born from above. Now, all of us are human, so we had a beginning point. So we all were born physically. But yet, according to Ephesians chapter 2, we, without Christ, are dead men walking. See, but the thing is, a lot of people don't know that they're dead. Nicodemus didn't know he was dead. He was rich. He was a ruler. 
you know, he had what he wanted. He had what he needed. He can do what he wanted to do because of his influence and because of his heritage. And so Nicodemus didn't think he had a problem. But Jesus come on the scene and opened up Nicodemus' eyes and said, Nicodemus, you're in a world of trouble. And today Jesus is saying, amen, to those who have not yet accepted him as Lord and Savior, you must be born again. Your physical birth is the only way you can come to a realization that you need a spiritual birth. Because a lot of people's lives are empty. A lot of people's uh, lives are unfulfilling. A lot of people are giving up and throwing in the towel because they have reached the pinnacle of uh, their vocation, of their jobs. They have uh, been presidents. They have been CEOs. They have been all these things, and it did not fulfill the joy that they thought it would. Yeah, it was a temporary high but there's still a void in their lives. And Jesus came on the scene to fill that void. Just like he's doing to Nicodemus, he can do for you. He said, Nicodemus, you must be born again. There must be a renewing of your mind, a changing of your heart, a about face from the direction you are going. It has to be a 180 degree turn, Nicodemus, so you can see God for yourself. My brothers and sisters, the worst fool is someone who thinks they're saved. Amen. See, a lot of people think they're going to heaven. And as my pastor used to say years ago, you know, they're going to buzz hell wide open. And it's not a funny statement. But we as human beings are so fickle and so finite that we think that what we're doing is right. But Jesus has come on and interrupted our lives to show us a better way, just like he's doing to Nicodemus. For the Bible says again in uh, verse three, I say to you, unless one is born again. All right. We're talking about a different type of birth. Amen. Uh, uh, and we understand birth. And I, I hope I don't have to go and explain that. Amen. Mom, dad came together and here we go. All right. That's birth. Physical. Amen. And uh, as David said, he was born in sin and shaping in iniquity. And that's many of our stories. Many of us have gone to our own way, did our own thing. Whatever we felt like doing, we did it. And still today. Some of us who are believers still go and do those things we have no business doing, even though we had an encounter with God by his Holy Spirit. But again, he says here, unless you was born again, you cannot see God's kingdom. There's no way one who is not saved can see the work of God. You're blinded. You're blinded by sin. You're blinded by pride, you're blinded by arrogancy. You're, you're blinded by self-will and self-righteousness. And you cannot see God because you haven't been born from above. Let's look at what Nicodemus is saying in four. Because I think Nicodemus might be kind of confused here. Nicodemus said to him, how can a man be born when he's old? Mm, that's a good question. How can I be born when I'm old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Mm. See, Nicodemus was on this physical birth. He's like, wait a minute. You mean to tell me that I got to go back where I came from and then be born again? See, he was all mixed up, all messed up on the inside, but the outside looked like he had it all together. See, and that's the problem with so many people today. They look like they have it all together, but yet there's death in the camp. So as we look at verse five, it says, Jesus answered, most assuredly, 
I say to you, unless one is born of water and the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Now, my brothers and sisters, friends, this is a powerful verse. Jesus is saying to Nicodemus, unless one is what? Born from above or born of water. Now, this is not talking about a physical baptism. And a lot of people will say, yeah, you have to be physically baptized. But this, and you do, and you should be. So you can identify with the death, the burial, and the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But this particular verse is talking about a cleansing. All men born of a woman have to be spiritually clean to enter to God's kingdom. So what Jesus was saying to Nicodemus and what he's saying to humanity is that without Christ, you are dirty. That's a hard word. Without Christ, you are filthy. Without Christ, you can do nothing. Without Christ, you are nothing. Wow. That hurts. <laughs> that talking about cut somebody deep. So Jesus is saying here that you must be spiritually clean. And you only can be clean by the power of the Holy Spirit. So it's time out for us fooling ourselves. And we have to ask ourselves the question. Have I been born again? Has a change, a spiritual change, a true change come into my life that I no longer involve myself in the things that pleases the flesh? Are you born again? Are you clean? Have you been washed by the Spirit of God? Jesus is not, you know, <laughs> mixing words here. I remember some time ago there was a preacher came in and he told us that mixing marijuana with Jesus, that's not right. Mixing Jesus with alcohol, that's not right. See, my brothers and sisters, there's a, there's a cleanliness that comes with salvation. See, when salvation comes into our life, we have a hatred for those things that we used to do. Even though we who are saved tend to go back and practice those things that we should be ashamed of. But if you continue to practice these things day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year, you have to check your salvation. You have to check to see if there was a spiritual change in your life. You know, the worst thing to me, especially those of us who grew up in church all our lives, we standing in line and just walk with me. And I don't know how it's going to be. But just say we standing in line, we smile and we high five one another. Yeah, yeah. And then we see one of us go in. All right, I'll be there in a minute. Y'all know how we do. And we stand before the beam of seed. We stand before Jesus Christ. And he said, depart from me. You work of iniquity. For I know you're not. Man, woman, boy or girl of the age of accountability. Have you been born again? Yes. Like I said, this is the season of love. Valentine is in the air. Jesus wants to be, amen, your Valentine, if you allow me to say that. Jesus wants to make your way straight. Jesus wants to change your soul from darkness to light. Would you allow him to do that? See, Nicodemus was confused. Even you might be confused. But there's a challenge on the floor for us to live right. It's a challenge on the floor for us to forsake this world 
forsake pride, forsake lust, to forsake hatred, and to embrace God's love and the love of all people. You know, we don't have to love what they do, but our heart should go out for their soul. So in this month of love, February, in the week of Valentine's, would you turn your heart to Christ? Will you allow him to love you the way that he desired to love you? Will you allow him to change the course of your direction? You know what? Because one day we're going to leave this place. One day, all that we have acquired, it will be gone. Or we will be gone, I should say. One day, we're going to close these eyes for the very last time. And we're going to breathe our last breath. Where would you spend eternity? Remember, the outside, that's all it is, just the outside. And as uh, we get older and older, our glory fades more and more. Doesn't say that. You know, um, our looks are diminishing, but it says we're, we're, we're fading. We're getting, instead of stronger and stronger, we're getting physically weaker and weaker. You know, and as uh, I'm approaching uh, a 50, I understand now. I didn't understand before. There's some aches and there's some pains that let me know that soon I will be gone. So what are you going to do with this message? What are you going to do with the love of God today? Are you going to allow yourself to have a Nicodemus moment? So you don't have to wait tonight to go to Jesus. You can go to him in the daytime, you know, in the comfort of your home, the comfort of your car, you know, wherever it may be, you need to go to Jesus and get it right because you must be born again. So let us uh, end with prayer. Our Father and our God, we, we thank you, Lord, for this opportunity. We thank you, Lord, again, for the heart of DJ Insane, Lord, as he thought enough, Lord God, to ask me to come on his show, Lord God, and to give words of inspiration, words of encouragement, words of challenge, Lord God, to humanity. And Lord God, we pray today that someone will hear and some will be better and some will be challenged. And we know, Lord, that this word has anger and will anger some. Lord God, because we think we are right in our natural state. We don't think anything is wrong with us. We thank Lord, because we have this and have that or access to it, Lord, that we're all right. Lord God, but you're concerned with our soul. And today, Lord, we ask, Lord, that you will intervene. That all who are here today, Lord God, will bow down at the foot of the cross and recognize their need for a Savior, and his name is Jesus. Recognize that they are Nicodemus, Lord God, in, in spirit, especially, Lord, if they have not, Lord God, you as their Savior. Lord God, remind us, Lord, as we remind others, that we must be born from above. And Lord God, and there's uh, two births in the life of an individual, his physical birth and her physical birth, and her spiritual birth and her spiritual in his spiritual birth, Lord God, that we may die once and not die twice. Thank you again, Lord, for all that you have done for us, all that you are doing, and all that you will do. And we, your children, Lord, be careful to give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. In your son Jesus' name, we say thank you, and we praise you. Amen.